You're catching up with Rude Dits and Laws for breakfast. Thanks to Sterling Homes. Make the move and visit sterlinghomes.com.au today. Get all the news you need. 104.7 Triple M. Hello, Adelaide. No one knows Adelaide like these guys. Triple M Breakfast with Rude Dits and Laws. Overnight news. Oh, there's a champion horse called Winx. Most people would know about it. It was the best horse in the world. It won 25 of the best race, uh, races in the world. They're called Group 1s. It won 26 million in prize money. Uh, how many did it win in a row, Dits? It won them, did it win them all in a row? It was unbeaten, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, unbeaten. every race. Unbeaten. Champion... Uh, Mare it was. Well, it's gone to stud now, and it's having its first foal. It's had its first foal, and then the first foal is going up to the Easter sales in Sydney in a couple of weeks, and they're saying it's going to break the record, nearly double the record. It's going to get near $5 million for one little young uh, yearling. Five million. Five million bucks. Five million. All right, and... There's a saying that champion mares don't spit out champion foals, oh. but everyone's choosing not to listen uh, at this stage. So we'll wait and see. Uh, years ago, there was a horse called Mackay Dave, which won three Melbourne Cups in a row, and that come from Port Lincoln. And at that time, uh, we had the Port Lincoln Hotel, and the guy that owned it, Tony Santic, wanted Port Lincoln people to stay in shares of it. So he bought 10 percent of it and we thought we should buy a section of that even though that my best mate who's been in horses his whole life said they don't spit out fast foals that don't do it but we did it because we had a bit of fear of FOMO and it never won a race <laughs> uh, so uh, someone's going to buy a horse for five mil and it's always the way. The one you don't buy into ends up being well, the champion. That's right. All right, let's talk a little bit of economics. Uh, and I think we know this. We've heard this a lot. But Scott Pape, when he says it, you think, well, it must be right then. Mm. Uh, rental market in this country fundamentally broken, he says. Yeah. Rental affordability worst on record. Now, as I said, I think we all knew that. But he's come out and really, really slammed the uh, situation we're in. It's Not good. dire. Mm, yeah. It is dire. It's bloody dire. Rue, you keep talking about immigration. Uh, I saw the figures last week. So 600,000 people came into Australia again this year. So they all have to find somewhere to live. It's 2,000 a day yeah. at the moment. So, so yeah. last year was a record 500 and something thousand. And then January this year was way above the last year. Yeah. So it please. just doesn't make any sense. Why are we doing it? Mm. To keep us from going into recession, isn't that the whole... Well... That's what they're well, saying. We've been recession. Hope, now. Where's everyone yeah. going to live? No, That's I don't. I don't know. And I'm I'm a renter, and I've been. You know, I mean, it's just been an yeah, issue. When for you years. found this place you're renting, was it really difficult to find, um, or did it happen quickly? No, I found it, but it was expensive, and yeah. I just I just had no choice. I just jumped on yeah. it, yeah. and I was in a position where I could afford to pay it. But it's more than I would like to pay, absolutely. Mm. But I knew that I had no no choice. So I had a family, a friend of mine. They decided. Uh, to move out because the people were trying to put their rent up by an extraordinary amount from 800 to 1100 within yeah. six months. Mm. That's a big increase. It's right? insane. Ridiculous. The house I was at before went up a hundred and went up two hundred dollars in a year. From and this what was to in what? 2021. So this was before. Um, uh, it went from oh, I think three eighty a week to five something. Gee, that's a big. So it, it was big. Well, yeah. So can I just say this is only not that long ago. I don't know, I'm thinking four or five years ago, I had a place in Brompton mm. and you talked to the agent and I said, look, we're charging 500. Can we put it up to 520 mm. or can we put it up to 510? Yeah, let's ask. Yeah. Now you're saying $300 increases. Oh, or, that's crazy. Yeah. Or, you know. And when I got my, uh, I got my new lease, I signed my new lease and they put it up 30 bucks a week and I didn't even bat yeah. an eyelid yeah. by signing it. In the past, I would have. <laughs> uh, just quickly, Tom Cruise is banned from Bugatti. I feel the need. Um, the need. Speed. He's what? He's banned from driving Bugattis, and the reason makes me laugh. So in 2006. Bugatti, Bugatti? Bugatti. I don't know how yeah, to say Yeah, I think it's, well, I don't really Bugatti know. Bugatti Breezes, whatever. Um, you know, the cars, the motorbikes, <laughs> yeah, all of it. He's not allowed to be richest, seen. The richest, one of the most expensive cars in the world. Near them or use yeah. them. Because yeah. in 2006, he got to the Mission Impossible 3 premiere with yeah. his then wife, Katie Holmes. She couldn't get out of the car and struggled to open the door. She couldn't open the door. And... 
Bugatti found it so uh, embarrassing yeah. that, oh, you've, sh- you've shamed us on a public sphere. <laughs> you know, you're banned for life yeah. from being yeah. seen with one Get of our of cars. Yeah. If that was, I wouldn't be allowed to drive Toyotas or Suzukis or anything if getting out of them was <laughs> Where's the latch? You know how with funerals now, not everyone can make it and like after COVID, everyone's kind of zooming into everything. Yeah. Yep. yeah. So a lot of people are zooming into funerals, which I think is great. You know, like if you're interstate or you're overseas and you want to watch the service, that's fine. Yeah. Um, at this particular funeral, they had the big, on the big wall at the actual service, they had like a Zoom meeting of all the people watching in. Okay. Like you'd see here in, a, in an office meeting. Exactly. Or people exactly. Zooming in from everywhere. Yep. So up on that big screen, you've got Steve, you've got John and Karen. You've Barb's got there. Barb's there. Mm-hmm. And they're all sitting there. Some of them have got their screen turned off. They're all on mute, which is good. And then just in the top right corner, you've got Hayley and she's in the shower shaving her Nethers. No, what? Oh, yes. What do you mean? <laughs> Haley is fully nude in the shower. Oh, get out. She's got the phone propped up on the counter and she's watching the service and she is just going to town well, on I herself. I forgot to turn the camera off. Forgot to turn the camera off. Is that so? Just so I know in future, please help me here. Yeah. <laughs> if I zoom into an event. Yeah. You can there, select it's always to turn two your ways, screen surely. off. No, nah, you can. You, you can. But she's just not done it. Oh, and it, and turn it is, your mute off. Turn your camera. Really? Off. When I say graphic, I mean it's just the way you behave when you think <laughs> when you think nobody's oh, watching. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's not like she's doing this trying to be hot. It's like she's got oh. a job to do. <laughs> And that's to tidy things up downstairs. Right. It's pretty bloody unlu- <laughs> right. pretty unlucky, if you want to use that as a word, that it just happened to be on the angle, angle. to get her. Yeah, I know. And I also think, I mean, I'm a bit critical of her. Not, she's not really paying attention. Well, this is the it's other thing. It's only a token effort to be involved in the funeral, really. <laughs> who, who the hell watches a funeral while doing that's some saying. landscaping? Yeah. Like, I, I, I just can't Time think Time management. Of, well, we, we, like... She was going. This is the thing, though. She went to the wake, so she couldn't get to the the service. She was running late. Was she? She showed up at the wake, had no idea. Oh! And everyone there was like, "That gets even better." Hales, we've just seen yeah. what you've been doing. Yeah. Have you got a hot date after so this? Or what's up, going yeah. on? Yeah. Yeah. Things anyway. you things you decide to do though, whilst you're meant to be watching a funeral. That's I know. Incredible. You think it? I just, just... Put cream on my hemorrhoids yeah. while we're bloody. <laughs> Might as well do two things at once. Please, They're someone burying show my best friend. how to turn his camera off. Oh, Please, the, the love l- of God. Wow. Oh, the phone's ringing, oh. did Shazza. <laughs> oh, your cousin from Albany. Oh, She's Port's biggest fan, painful. your second cousin, yes. as we said. They went over to knock off Richmond over the weekend. I wonder if Shaz went over there to see Travis Bokes, 300th. G'day, Shazza, 350th, in fact. Oh, g'day, guy. Yeah, Rupert out there. 350 games. I was there. What a legend. Look, 350 games with Travis Spoke and 350 missed calls from me when he wakes up this morning, honestly. <laughs> Come on, Trav. Give me a call back. But seriously, I feel like we've both grown up together along the way, Trav and I. You know, back in 2007 when he started, I was unemployed and single and, you know, going to every port game. And now, well... Well, look, he's come a long way. And that's <laughs> yeah, what's important. That's right. Hey, hey, not many people make it to 350 games. I mean, it's a magnificent effort, isn't it? It sure is, Stitch. And I just don't think he's got enough attention in the media for it. I mean, if it was Tex Walker's 350, it'd be a bloody street party and a you know, public holiday. Yeah. Us poor folk, we just fly under the radar, don't we, Ditch? I mean, yeah. when I cracked the 350 visits at the Alberton Hotel, mm. no one said shit. Yeah. And I, honestly, I mean, at two visits a day, it only took me six months. <laughs> But still, I would have appreciated some mention. Yeah, well, it'll come. Wait till you get to 500. Hey, did you go and watch the Crows uh, take on Geelong Friday night, Shaz? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bad luck, Rupert. Look, I mean, I really like that new forward you've got. What's his name? Tom Stewart. God, he took some good marks. <laughs> no, Shaz. Tom, Tom Stewart plays for Geelong, Shaz. Are you sure, Dick? Yeah, he does, yeah. Oh, I thought he must have been a Crows player, the way he was kicking, kicking to him laced out all night. <laughs> Yeah, he had a fair night in his 150th, didn't he? Uh, did you see the pitch invader at the Crows game as well, Shaz? Oh, I did, Rue. What a bloody goose. You know, if you're going to do it, do it naked. That's what I say. I mean, 
keeping your clothes on. Like, I saw Ben Keys took him down. Mm. Uh, by the way, only tackle he got all night. And oh. I've, heard he, I've, I've heard he's actually copped a four game ban for it because it was a bit high. Um, <laughs> Sling tackle. No, but honestly, if you've got to do it, as I said, get your gear off. Back in the nineties, I used to streak nude. That's how it's done. The flying bush they used to call me. <laughs> right, Chaz. Uh, I think we might wrap it up. No, nah, I've got to go anyway, fellas. I'm popping up a tent in the front yard. I'm renting it out for three grand a night on Gather Around Weekend. It's going to be absolutely yeah, good beautiful. Luck. Good luck with that. All right. All good right. on you, Shaz. Hooray. Thanks for joining Down us, the Shaz. Hey, Shaz. Had a bit of fun around our house the last couple of weekends. We've been staying in Adelaide. We didn't go away for the long weekend. And on the weekend, we just had a quiet weekend. We're in, in between summer sports and winter sports and just spending a bit more time around the house. And I, I told you a story about how I went to bed uh, middle of last week and all I could hear is this noise in the lounge room. <laughs> and it wasn't coming from the backyard. Uh, the kids had been out collecting crickets for some reason and decided to put them in an aquarium. And uh, three or four of them were in one bedroom and uh, whinging they couldn't sleep, quite rightly, because the crickets were that bloody loud. So we had to put them in the lounge room and then um, everyone could sleep. That was all good. And then the crickets died a couple of days later. Oh, they died? Yeah, oh, they always, all pets always die mm. because they get forget about water and yeah. you know, not their natural habitat. And right. Yeah. The kids get a bit sad for about 20 seconds and then they go and tip them out in the garden and then they find another pet. And I was yeah. sitting on the lounge <laughs> watching Port take on Richmond at the MCG oh. yesterday and then... Tom has belted through the front door and said, Dad, Dad, I've got a mouse. And he comes <laughs> running into the lounge room, his hands in a cup together with a mouse head just poking out oh, at the end of it. Because that little thing's a mouse. That's right. That's why? He's got a, a mouse. mouse. Yeah. Um, I said, where'd you get it from? And he said, the cat was running up the hill with it, and I got it out of the cat's mouth. So the, <laughs> <laughs> the cat had caught him. saved out. him. Well, saved him, if you want to call it that. So I wasn't keen on having mice in the house. No one's keen because once you get them in, you can't mm. get them out. Um, but anyway... We've got a new pet. They cleared out the fish out of the aquarium that they went and bought from Pet Stock not long ago. Uh, they've been given the um, given the sideways movement, and they've created a mouse enclosure now. Wow. An enclosure, yeah. So. Right. Do they know yeah, they, how um, to take care I'm of a mouse? I'm going to take bets on how long do you think the mouse will live for? What what uh, what about his name? Or is it a he? Uh, I think they've got a name for it. I, I can't remember what the name oh. was. I'll come back to you with that. I'll, okay. I'll text in. Mentioned um, Michael Jackson earlier this morning. The song Ben was about yeah, he was a pet rat. rat. A pet rat. Mm, yeah. Rats are. I had a pet mouse. Yeah. Did you? Yeah, it was a little black and white one called Minnie, and I had it for a couple of years, and then it escaped. We put it out. It's a bit smelly, Minnie. Like if you didn't clean out the the yeah, hay. Yeah. So we put it on the back porch mm. and a storm tipped it over the little enclosure and Minnie got out and I was very sad and then we cleaned the enclosure out and I put it, it was just sitting there with the little wheel in it and about six months later I came home from school and I heard oh no and Minnie had she was back she was back and she was on the wheel oh what a story oh, but, well done. no what I'm not story. joking and my mum can confirm oh. this <laughs> Minnie on. came back and because she was black and white she wasn't like a normal field mouse you knew it was her but she was different She'd been through some stuff out there in the paradise. Bit of life experience, yeah. seen some things. The, the, yeah. But she survived. Yeah, but she had a bit of her ear was missing and oh. just like it's it like a it was like hardened, oh. you know. Is that right? She was never the same. She never let me hold her again. She'd bite me. <laughs> Mike Tyson or Chopper. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's a tough life there, yeah. there for a mouse. Yeah. It is. Um but there the kids, they get some strange pets. Um one triple three five three. What do you got running around in your house? It's a weird at the pet you've had growing yes, up. Yes, have Maybe you got you've still one? Got. Rue's got a new pet mouse over the weekend after they had crickets for pets last week. Yeah. Mm. Tell us about your crazy pets. Let's go to Strath. G'day, Chris. What do you got in your house? Yeah, hey guys and Loz, how you going? Good, G'day, mate. Good. Good. Yeah, we've got a uh, pet yabby there, guys. So uh, yeah, <laughs> boys. I've had one for a couple of years on and off, but um, yeah, I had one when I was a kid as well, and uh, Good mine pet. used to get out. Of yeah, they are actually. Why are they yeah. good pets? I like oh, looking at them they, in the tank. Oh. Yeah, they are good in the tank. Yeah, Have you got two in there or one? No, nah, just the one. Oh, just the one. Get her, get her partner. And then yeah, then they, them. What, watching them get eggs and then watching the eggs hatch and then watching the little ones cruise wow. around on the yabby are, is yeah. brilliant. What's, uh, what's his name, Chris? 
Oh, this one hasn't got a name. Oh. He, he kicks pretty quiet. This one, he's just okay. sort of, yeah, so just in the corner of the room. Does he come yeah, out? Yeah, every now and again, when you feed him, you'll crawl around and that sort of stuff. Have yeah. they got a Have they got a personality? Yeah, I think they do a bit. Yeah, yeah. I get I get this one. I used to get him out of the tank a bit and yeah, get him to play with the kids. Can you put him to sleep? No, nah, I haven't tried oh, that one. I'm gonna have to teach a couple <laughs> of tricks. I think, Chris. <laughs> what? How do you we're know how to the put pro- a yabby to the sleep? Like I'm that. half man, half He's yabby. He's Mr. Yabby. 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 Let's yabby. go to oh. Finden. G'day, Ruby. <laughs> what pet have you got in your house? I've got two stick insects and heaps of eggs. What do you oh. mean? What, what do you mean, stick insect? They're like little bugs that looks like praying sticks. mantis. Yeah, I oh, know. Yeah. Are they different to a praying yeah. mantis, Ruby? Uh, yeah, they're different to praying mantis. Are they? What, what do you feed them? Just gum leaves. We put gum leaves in yeah. the um, cage, yeah. and then we put the stick insects on top of them, right. and then we spray them with water because the stick insects have to drink. Oh, have yeah. to drink that way. Yeah, right. Through their skin. Now, have they got names or not? Yeah. Tilly and Cleo. Right. Tilly and Cleo. Nice. Cool. Are they? Do they um adapt to their mum? Do like they change their skin color? Uh, well, they shed their skin and then they eat it. Ooh, wow. like gold member. Self sufficient. <laughs> yeah. Gum leaves in their own skin. Yeah. Right. Thanks, Ruby. Interesting diet. That was yeah. an education there. In oh, we've got a heap more calls here. <laughs> Different pets you've got. Ruse had crickets in the last couple of weeks. Now he's got a mouse. Uh, the things the kids are bringing home. What have you got, Reese at Mano Parra West? What's yours? Hey boys, hey Lots, how you going? Good, Reese. What do you got as a pet? Um, wasn't me. It was more so my neighbour. Um, he had a. I'm not sure if it was a crocodile or alligator. But he had two baby ones. Mm. Oh. Where in um, South Australia? Yeah, I. I know it sounds stupid, probably doesn't sound real, um, but... Doesn't sound legal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's... that's def- it, was, it wasn't Steve Irwin, was it? <laughs> no, nah, no, no. No, he was a... I will say he was a mysterious man. He always had, um, <laughs> he always had something different to everybody else. Okay. Mm. <laughs> How long did he have him? Uh, I think he had him briefly for about a year, um, but, like, he was a guy too, though, that, like... He'd have something, but then he would move it to the right place when he was done with it. Okay. Uh, Yeah, yeah, it doesn't sound real, um, but, yeah, I swear on my life that... I believe you. I believe you. There's some strange cats out there. Let's go to Salisbury East. Brad, what weird pet have you had around the house? Uh, Yeah, good morning. Uh, So when I was a kid living up at uh, Banksia Park, I was actually uh, out and about just uh, with my mate down the creek and swimming through and put my foot down on what I thought was a solid rock and reached down, pulled out a turtle that was about the size of a dinner plate. So he lived in the back shed for a little while and uh, yeah, I think he was a bit of an escape artist. he managed to uh, get away from us as well, and yeah, I'm not sure where he ended up in the end. But now, <laughs> yeah. um, Brad, have you seen how quick turtles move? <laughs> uh, I have, yes. And he, yeah. managed to, and he managed to get away. They're quicker than you. Oh, oh come on! They yeah. are. These, in, the, these in guys, water, they yeah, are. the water turtles are quick. Yeah. Not the old tortoises that are like 200 years old wow. and stuff. Right. But they're uh, not fast on land. Yeah, they are pretty quick. On land? Yeah, we had a class pet called Franklin, and he nearly escaped. We had to take him home one Christmas, and he nearly escaped my bedroom. He must have been on the juice, Franklin, (laughs) because every other turtle I've seen (laughs) is like about me and Dits after the 34K walk we did not. Let's go to Joslyn. G'day, Simon. What's the weird uh, pet you've had? Morning, guys. Uh, We've got a um, a vicious meat-eating Mexican walking fish. (laughs) Sometimes called an axolotl. Oh, oh, an axolotl. Yeah, I've had one of those. His name's Fang. 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 <laughs> oh, the so They're a walking fish. Yeah. Have, they, have they got legs, have they? Yeah. Yeah. They've got legs, yeah. They've got legs and like external gills, so they've got these weird things on the outside of their neck. Yeah, they're ugly. And they just walk around. But he, he, Hang on, he, I need to yeah, Google gotta this. You've got to feed him meat, and he kind of launches himself out, himself out of the, uh, the aquarium yeah. to get yeah. the meat. Give it traumatized, no. traumatized my little boy's mate when he came to look after him. When how we long, on how big is yours? Like about four or six inches or something? Yeah, about six inches, right? Yeah. Oh. Does yours look a little bit like a? Oh, are you kidding? Part? I've just googled this. You've got to be joking. <laughs> it looks a little, it looks a little bit like a male private. Part. It does a little <laughs> bit. <laughs> with legs on it. Is yeah. yeah. Oh, it's yeah. Seen one with legs. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, they're not the prettiest looking I. fish, but they're. 
Good viewing. Oh, they are not. They're, yeah. they, they're the ugliest animal I've ever seen. Yeah, they're a bit messed up, actually. I think actually. we did the wrong thing when I used to live down at Lockleys. We used to live on Linear Park. We got sick of our axolotl and I put it in the bloody torrent. What? It's probably a massive So you ex- had one of these? <laughs> I did have one. We, that could, could, have, we probably... could have them everywhere. Now, in the toll, you'd need two to breed, I suppose. Yeah. No, I'm sure it, it could bred, be like, bred with yeah, a carp and made some two weird or three species. Meters it says here, they're like a prehistoric monster. Yeah, yeah they are. come up and bite you, dits down at Lockleys. So they're oh, a bit no. vicious, are they? Uh, well, they like their food. Okay. I think I've seen him drinking at the Alberton. <laughs> <laughs> it's right, it's a lot. Yeah. Triple M. Right. On Triple M Breakfast with Rue Dits and Loz. Did you learn something? What did we learn? What did we learn? Oh, I had a quiet weekend around the house on the weekend. Watched a reasonable amount of football and I reckon what's something sneaking into the game that we don't want it to and that's people faking high hits at the moment, mm. faking free kicks and I reckon... Mm. It's one of the things that when I watch soccer, I go, God, gee, I'm, I'm glad that's not my number one sport. I don't know how soccer or people feel about people that dive in that game as well. But we meant to um, give free kicks away or even uh, fine or suspend players that do it in the AFL. But it just looks like it's sneaking into the game a little bit too much. We need our umpires to be across it. Uh, we don't want our umpires to fall for it and actually pay free kicks and 50 metre penalties. On the weekend, I reckon I saw a f- couple of 50 metre penalties. Also saw a big melee happen because one player in the Gold Coast uh, Dogs game made out the uh, shove he got from the uh, Gold Coast player was worse than what it was. And then a heap of players come in and basically had a bit of a uh, you know a 20 person melee because of it. So let stamp it out of the game, which we're meant to be doing, and at the, mo- at the moment yeah. we're not. I don't think anyone disagrees, Rue. What did you learn, Loz? Um, mine's a two-pronger. So I don't know if you know this, but Prince Harry, Yep. his real name isn't Harry. I didn't know that. It's actually Henry. Is it? Yes. So, oh, no. Why do they call him Harry then? Well, because it's tradition in the royal um, family, the English royals, that if your name's Henry, your nickname is Harry, and that comes from all the way back when really? King Henry, all the King Henrys yeah, that have right. existed, and it comes back because it, it's a French name, Henri, uh, and Henri, Henri, yeah. the nickname was Harry, Harry, uh, and then that turned into okay. Harry. Anyway, so now you know that. Yeah. So I'm going to take you back to the year 1100. Right. And William the Conqueror, uh, his two sons, Harry and William. Yeah. I don't know if that sounds familiar. Mm. Uh-huh. They were Henry and William, or it was Henry, but his name was he was called right, Harry. Right, just call him bloody Harry. William was the older brother. <laughs> yeah, he inherited the throne. Right, Harry did not like him. Oh, they were out hunting. Deja vu. William got shot with an arrow. Mm. Was it Harry? Oh, was it an accident? Of course it was. William dies. Harry takes the throne. Right, and he come he becomes king. Henry the first, right, right. the first one we ever had. Mm, okay, so it's just a little bit weird, in my opinion. Yeah. I was reading about this and I went, oh, "Spooky." That's, that's a bit of a spooky. Yeah, and I would have thought, you know, when you're naming your kids in the royal family, you wouldn't name them after the the two brothers who yeah. one of them murdered the that's other right. one. It's a bit of a weird choice. Mm. That is strange because they do like their history. They do. They, they do. would have. They've they named do. after their historic yeah. people. All right, so. mine just quickly. Mine's from the world of football as well. Now the pitch invader over the weekend. I haven't yet come across anyone that said to me, gee, that was funny, or I really enjoyed that, or (laughs) love him. I did used to like a streaker. We did. So back in the day. they got to be naked. Right. So that's right. A real streaker. So these aren't streakers. These are pains in the ass. Potentially dangerous. Very dangerous. And anyway, what it made me think over the weekend, now pick the paper up Saturday morning. Big photo of him on the front page. Mm. Watch the news that night. It's on every news service, all the footage of him. He also filmed it himself on his phone, so therefore he's now shared it with all his mates. So he's got it forever. Yeah, took the hat. (laughs) So what I'm getting at (laughs) here, we actually have to give a bloke like him zero coverage. Yeah. No, because he's now achieved exactly what he wanted to do. We're talking about him. Yeah, but I haven't mentioned his name and we don't know who he is. What I'm saying is, though, the photo of him, this is radio, we can't see him, the photo of him, front page, like, you don't reckon he's dining out on, I'm on the front page of the paper, and I, I was on 7 News and 9 News. I going, well done, congratulations. Well, I just think we have Why to... Why did he do it? What was the point? Why do streakers do it? Well, I get that. The what thrill of the nudity, they love it. They're just like, Five yeah. grand's hefty. Well, he'd be doing the same thing. He was wearing jorts, for God's sake. <laughs> like gets, so $5,000? Yeah. I reckon that, it's not worth it, is it? Surely. No. And they're talking about it. A life ban, life minimum ban. three. Yeah, nothing's worth Surely it. Surely it's not worth it. Mm. Well, you're not. Are you drunk or are you? 
Oh, absolutely. There's no way he wasn't a few tins under. There's just no way. Mm. And he can come after me if Tell us what sober. you think on the text line, by the way. Yeah. 04 1047 But anyway, that's oh, what yeah. we learned on the weekend. I don't think it makes a lot of sense, does nah. it? Some good friends of ours, we don't like to hear these stories, but some good friends of ours got into a little bit of trouble, it's fair to say, recently. Yep, but now they're back and they're trading again. And Craig, one of the owners from Big Shed Brewery, is with us on the line. G'day, Craig. How are you guys? You well? Yes, good, good, good. good. Thanks. Now, you know, we love it down at Big Shed. We've we had do. some good times down there. Great food, good grog. I'm but, impressed you can uh, remember it, mate. Eh? I'm impressed you can remember it. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Now, big turnaround in recent times. What's happened? Tell us your story. Yeah, look, as you, as, as became, you know, well and apparent public knowledge, um, we had to go into what they call voluntary administration, um, just with all the things that went on, you know, from COVID sort of then on onto interest rates and all that sort of stuff that everyone knows about. Um, the, opter- the, op- the alternative to us was either go into VA and try and restructure some, some finances or try and trade through in the coming months and, and most likely fall over. So we made the tough call and uh, the people... The you know the South Australian public um, and our suppliers and our wholesale partners they responded in ways that I still get emotional thinking about. Um, they they really rallied around us, helped us both financially and emotionally. We were able then to uh, come up with a plan going forward. And the other uh, last Tuesday, I think it was, um, the proposal was put to our creditors. They agreed to it. They approved it. So now we are back. And we are ready to rock and roll. It's going to be good. Yeah, Blimey good luck with it. And not just great beer down there, great food as well. And it's a Best great place. Best chicken to... burger in town, yeah. I would say. I thought good atmosphere. F- food was equally as good as yeah. the beer, Craig, you. down Thank there. Um, been a tough time for uh, breweries like yourselves. And we've spoken on this show a couple of times about it. The tax that's been on twice yearly at the moment. Um, God, is there any end in sight for what the government's trying to do with alcohol and, and price rises? Oh, look, I could... I could... I could, you know, get on my high horse for it and and spout on about the tax system and all that sort of stuff. But yeah, it does. The fact that the excise goes up twice a year, every year, um, no matter no matter what, mm. cert- certainly doesn't doesn't help the cause. But I think this isn't just a this isn't just a beer problem. This is a hospitality and a, even a wider small business problem. You know, people are people are struggling at the moment um, to find to find the spare cash to do those things like go out and have a beer, have a bite to eat. And I appreciate that. Um, I would just say that if you've got a local that you really love, go and say good day. Go and buy something. You know, spend within your means. Don't go stupid by any stretch. But but just support those small businesses because people can sometimes take the take them for granted that they'll always be there. Yeah. But if we don't support them, we they won't be. Um, that's what we've learned. You know, if you said to me sort of five years ago that West End Brewery wouldn't be where it was, I would have said you were mental. Yeah. Mm. But yeah. If something that big can go, sure. Well, small businesses is, is we don't have the we don't have the financial backing that they do. Yeah. So. Fair. Now you've got the uh, the big brewing process out the back there at Big Shed. How many people do you employ? We employ about forty five people. Wow. Give or yeah. take. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it's a it's a and that's the that's the beauty of this is that the locals rally um, and save forty five jobs. Yeah. You know, that's the bit that we love. Yeah. Um And it, and it shows it shows my whole my, myself, Jace, and our whole crew that we we do something that people value. Um, and that's important as well to keep going when you when times are tough. Um, that people value and rally behind it. So that's been amazing. Well, you got Gather and you got Live Golf, you got Easter this weekend. Hopefully, a big few weeks for Big Shed Brewery. What's happening down there over the Easter weekend? Yeah, mate. Well, Easter weekend we're open. We're open every day of Easter. Um, coming up, Gather Round. We've got our. I can't remember if you guys have had or not, but our Sunday. We normally do a bottomless barbecue on a Sunday. We're running that across the entire Ooh, uh, gather round. It's where I have smoke, smoke, meat, goodness, um, heart attacks on a platter, delicious. <laughs> <laughs> well, Yum. Um, and then the, uh, after that, 19th of April, we've got Riot City Wrestling coming down for uh, uh, a wrestling event called Brutality. And if you were there oh, at the last yay. one, it was amazing fun. <laughs> Um, the boys are jumping off the off the mezzanine there, just having an absolute blast. <laughs> it's, it's a bit like our OB we Sounds had down there. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Stand, well, otherwise, to you guys, standard Wednesday night. Right? <laughs> yeah. Beautiful. Right. Well, <laughs> well, it's good news, Craig. It's good to hear that things are turning around. I know you've still got yeah. some hard work to do, but uh, yeah. it's great to hear that Big Shed's up and firing. 
Thanks, mate. Appreciate it. And appreciate all your guys' support across this whole this whole journey. And everyone, every South Australian, I love you guys. Good, Good on you, mate. Craig. No, you remember, best, you remember mate. that uh, they made our beer for us. They did. Going back a while. Bloody beautiful. Yeah, Triple M beer. Collector's item. Next. 104.7 Triple M. Stay cool with an Auto Masters aircon service. Call 1300 Auto Masters. <laughs> Have you heard? Have you heard? Have you heard? Your rumor file's been on the money a few times. Oh, so. hey. Hey. Oh, the God. Premier says. Every morning at 7.40 a.m., hear what's happening in Adelaide. First, mm. the rumour mill. Oh, we've had Fringe, we've had WOMAD, we've had uh, the Motorsport Festival as well, and we've got Gather Round coming up next weekend, and then after that we've got Live Golf towards the end of April, isn't it? Yeah, yeah that's right, yep. Rumours come across our desk that uh, they're going to have something new down at Live Golf in 2024. Apparently, they're going to have an epic double-decker driving range. Uh, what? They're going to build a double-decker driving range down at the Grange Golf Club, mm. which has never been done before in golf. Uh, so it'll be a couple stories higher, uh, and it's going to allow around about 50 or 60 people to tee off at a time. You'll uh, be able to buy hospitality packages down there to go and eat and drink and smack Tee a golf off. ball. and um, Whilst you're at the golf wandering around as well. Yeah. Yeah. So you're down there watching the golf and you think, let's go and hit some balls. Yeah, because that's what people... Plus you, food and drink. You want to hit a ball when this you're there. This is different. Wow. Yeah. So it's that's a bit, great. A bit like the paddock club or the pit lane at Formula One. Okay. Um, yeah, so it's... Interesting. Haven't heard that Something before. Something different they're giving. Yeah, exactly. I mean, so if you're it? a mad golfer, this is for you. Yeah. This really is. This is yeah. the ultimate package, isn't it? I Haven't. feel like every there's, everyone's a mad golfer that I know now. <laughs> yeah. Everyone's... People that I didn't even know, yeah. you yeah. know, they're obsessed. Well, that's what that's what it does, doesn't it? When you bring big things to, you know, town, yeah. Yeah. people get hooked on it and hey, want to uh, try it. We have heard as well, there are ground passes still for Friday and Saturday. Uh, you can still secure a VIP viewing package um, for all the concerts over the weekend oh, yeah, as well, Loz. That's, amazing, that's a bit yeah. of you. Uh, head to livegolf.com for more info. But, yeah, good rumour, Roo. If you, as, if you love your golf, this is for you. Um, Don Bradman's bat has yes. sold for $165,000. How many has bats has really? Don got wrapped well, that's up the interesting in his thing. Do you know, they once said that he would go down to the Sacker office every day and just sign hundreds of things mm. so that it couldn't be exploited. So in other mm. words, there were that many Bradman things signed that they became worthless. Yeah. Rather than, I've got the one signed Don Bradman thing that's now worth a million dollars. Well, $165,000 ain't worthless. That's good money, yeah. I think we've got some audio of you commentating. He's got a century in both innings oh. in the Melbourne Test against England. Oh, and the MCC some your early work. It was, it was a good hundred now, too. <laughs> I thought he played rather well. Did we all just, did we all just get about talking like this? I think we did. <laughs> what on earth was going on back then? Why? You good could have done golly it. Golly gosh. Yeah. How odd. <laughs> Truly odd. What were you saying about the sound effects? They used to do their own sound effects. Well, you can see this. There are old movie tone pictures. Alan McGilvray was the most famous commentator on the ABC. He did the test matches for decades and decades. Yeah. And they used to, when they were playing in England, they would send through a wire that would say, Bradman hits a single through the covers. Yeah. And, and this would be, you know, five minutes later he'd get it. And so he'd go, <laughs> oh, when Bradman hits a single through the covers. <laughs> he'd, and he'd make his own. They had a little uh, a piece of wood and, a, <laughs> and he would tap it. on it. <laughs> To replicate the sound of the bat on ball, oh. uh, and that's how they used to commentate the cricket on delay out of the, out of the in, uh, England <laughs> and Incredible. have little sound effects. And now we have Hamish to push the button. <laughs> They're still we're doing, doing that on yes. delay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, coming up. Boom. How dare you? It's your last chance for the Hospital Research Foundation Home Lottery. Get your tickets before March 27. HomeLottery.com.au Triple M Breakfast with Blue Dits and Lies. What's a goal? Overnight Sports. Port Adelaide had a five-goal win over Richmond in Travis Boak's 350th game at the MCG. Let's have a listen to Coach Ken Hinckley. Yeah, the first quarter we played okay and didn't reward ourselves a little bit, but then second quarter we got beaten badly in a couple of phases of the game that we pride ourselves on, and that'd be contests and a bit of defensive shape. So... We didn't really do that that well. I pointed that out clearly to the boys at, at half time, but it was a good sign, I think, for me, for the maturity, maturity of the team and the group that, that they realised what wasn't working so well for them and they, they were capable of change. 
Yeah, got the win. Yep. Uh, Todd Marshall kicked four goals, but there were times where they were really convincing and times where they weren't yesterday. Yeah, I think uh, that's a fair summary from Ken Hinckley. Uh, Richmond had five outs before the game, and I never comment about umpires, Dits, but I reckon for once he actually had a good r- uh, run. Well, that's in not Melbourne. bad, once in 20 years. <laughs> I know, I know. Did, did you feel that yesterday when Wasn't you were bad. watching? <laughs> it was all right, yeah. <laughs> hey, it was unbelievable. Like I see, what about the times we get belted? And, oh. and you've been through it. The Crows have been playing interstate. I know. It's not. Uh... I know, I'm just saying, yesterday, <laughs> I was actually sitting on the couch going, gee, this is this is good. <laughs> <laughs> Even the score of you, where they clearly saw it was touched, yeah, and then it went back to the middle. Yeah, nothing to see Strange. here. Strange, yeah. <laughs> nothing to see. All right, power of two zip. Now take on Melbourne at home this Saturday night. Well, and Melbourne now, Stephen May uh, and Jake Lever look like they're injured. May has got three broken ribs and maybe a crack in his vertebrae. Mm. He's still in hospital. He was yesterday. Yep. And Jake Lever sent for scans for his knee. So the best sort of uh, two combination in defence might not be playing against Port Adelaide this week yeah, or the okay. Crows the week after potentially. Yeah, that's right. Speaking of the Crows, let's go back to Friday night. Went down to Geelong by 19 points. Here's coach Matty Nix. Yeah, although we had our chances, we, we just lacked composure when we needed it and sometimes that can be forced or, or perceived pressure that can cause that. But yeah, we had our, we had our chances where, you know, especially front half, where we, were, we just weren't able to execute by foot going inside 50 you know, giving ourselves the best chance to score and, and not taking away from the fact that our opposition are, are, are very strong in that area as well. Yeah, Geelong a bit too good there on Friday night. Crows did have their chances but couldn't capitalise on them. They were all over the shop in their Ford 50, so they need, they're going to need to get going pretty quick. You don't want to be zipping too, that's for sure. They head to Perth on Friday. Good Friday clash with the Dockers, who had another good win. All right, now there's been another big clash that will be sent straight to the tribunal. Now the Bombers get it to centre. We all big contest. Oh, right went right through Cunningham, and Harry is down for the count right now. As the Swans fans let you know what they thought about that act from two metre Peter. No, oh, some of the players are a bit slow reacting to these rule changes. Now, a couple of years ago, this would have been fine because it was a. F- half a football action but he was late and it was high and he braced he's now been sent straight to the tribunal he'll be getting minimum three probably four weeks uh, on the sideline so not good for two metre Peter all right 452,000 people went to the Grand Prix in Melbourne over the weekend it's a record crowd Ferrari finished 1-2 Carlos Sainz the winner Unbelievable. Max Verstappen's car caught on fire. Aussie Oscar Piastri finished fourth, which is magnificent. What, Daniel Ricciardo, 12th. What, what happens with that there? He should have been third, and they told him to slow down and let his bloody teammates oh, through. What, what goes on with that? It's been happening for years, yeah. They have their number one driver, and that's it. And uh, he, You've got to support him. It doesn't sound right, does it? Well, the kid was you'd be peeved, spewing. I can tell you. Oh, yeah, you'd be spewing for sure. And, Rue, I've got another one up. Port Adelaide Cricket Club won the won the flag over the weekend. Oh, beat Glenelg, yeah, beat the favourites. Beat Glenelg. Yeah, well done, them out well as done. Well. Of course they did. Well done to Port Adelaide. <laughs> hey, and uh, they won the Bradman Medal as well. Tom Andrew during the week. So scoop the Paul. Oh, well done oh, to the Port boys. You know, over the last couple of decades in Adelaide, I've always been a little bit. Uh, um, negative about uh, building and stuff around our city. I've always thought if we had Jeff Kennett here, he'd just get it built. You know, we go through. We seem to be the red tape city and the red tape state, don't we? Mm. Building regulation uh, for some reason over the border, things just got built, and yet here you'd be waiting years and years and years, and you got to go through red tape regulations, yeah. bureaucrats, and building and council approvals and environmental approvals and planning permission, and then it gets knocked back, and on mm. it goes. Yeah. So I, I, the reason I say that is I drove to Port Augusta on the weekend and I just want to ask the question, who's the moron that signed off on building a wind farm in front of the Flinders Ranges? If we can't build anything in Adelaide and it takes years, months, decades, whatever to get through, who, who said that that was okay? Because mm. I actually do understand. When I see things like that, I think, yep, you do have to have regulation and you do actually have to have strict guidelines mm. because that just shouldn't be built there. Well, well, presumably they put it there so that it was most effective for well, what they needed it to do. Good question. Good good thinking. And I thought that too. I thought, is this windier than anywhere else in Australia or South Australia? Or is like there's that much land in South Australia and Australia. We've got a lot of vacant land out there. Mm. I, I one of the great wonders of the world, one of the most incredible places to visit in yeah. the world, the Flinders Ranges. And you're driving along on the main highway 
and there's a wind farm in the way. Well, we, we spoke about it on this show probably five years ago, maybe longer, with Mark Parnell, the leader of the Greens, and he said, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Well, that ain't beautiful. <laughs> but it's it's the whole point of it. I mean, sometimes I feel like, look, environmentalists and people who are trying to save the planet, they're not doing it. It's not some, some conspiracy to irritate boomers. Like it, there's a reason why. They they put those wind farms there. It's to save the environment. No, no, no. And there's that two you different issues. You're right. You save the it's, environment, and it's but don't put it there. It's a very beautiful environment that we want to save, and sometimes you have to sacrifice bits of it to put up ugly things like it's wind farms. pretty skeptical whether they work still, isn't it? Uh, yeah, well, I but, actually don't have the again, data on that. Another issue, Ruth. Yeah. Like, I, I agree with you. Right? Let's save the environment. Build them. Yeah. Please don't build it there. Yeah. Well, I, why would they have done it there? If good question, yeah. that's my whole question I don't about know if this. It's, they had to put a heap there because they can uh, hook up to the power line there mm. from the old power plant, or or what it is. But it, it is a crazy place. But you see them is. all over the, you know, the, yeah, and nowhere that's fine. near power plants. You see them in different places. I don't think. Yeah, you know, that costs them more to hook up. But anyway, it's a it, it is very very weird when it's strange you're, when you're looking there. But as I say, when we get knocked back on all sorts of building things we want to do around the place. Oh yeah, but someone my can, parents couldn't put up a pergola. That's right. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. <laughs> Could have put a wind turbine. Yeah, that's there. right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, it's been another great morning. Thanks for joining us. Uh, Quickie will jackpot to 300 bucks tomorrow. Yeah, <laughs> and the rumour mill. We've only got three more days to get your rumours in before the end of the month when we announce a $1,000 winner. So get that organised and get the confidence to get it off your chest. You can yeah, be anonymous you, if you yeah, need to. Yeah, we can pitch your voice down and everything. Yep, and also it is the last week for the $50,000 no repeat work Whoa, day as well. Yes. off this week. It Apparently, is going on nice. this week. little birdie okay. told me All right. 50 grand up for grabs between nine and four if you hear a song played mm. twice in its entirety by the same artist. You can call one triple three five three.